no power, no shower. Welcome to the Philippines. Just dropped off some laundry, seven kilos for a couple of bucks or something. What? Anyway, we're just on my way. I'm at Toledo. I'm just on my way to the uh, ferry terminal. Just, I think time spent doing a reconnaissance is time well spent. So I'll just go there and find out what the process is, how much it costs, what time I've got to be there, and then uh, see if I can purchase a ticket for me and the bike for tomorrow, travelling across to San Carlos on the island of Negros. <laughs> Well, that's the ferry coming in. <laughs> I've been here for an hour and a half just watching the process. I was hoping to buy a ticket for tomorrow, but you can only buy the ticket on the day of departure, which makes no sense to me. But anyway, so the boat's inbound, the ferry, and there's still people queuing up. And I did ask a bloke if anybody ever misses the ferry, and he assures me they don't. But the uh, slow old process getting the ticket. Well, at least the ferry appears to be row, row, roll on, roll off. I was curious as to uh, how I was going to get the bike on. I didn't want to have to drag it up any gangplank, if you know what I mean. So that's that's one of my questions answered, at least. All right, well, I've, I've seen enough for the morning. It's after 11 o'clock. The ferry is still loading with vehicles and passengers. There's still people at the ticket office. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just have to get here. The ticket office opens at 9 a.m. for the 11 o'clock departure. I'll get here at 4 to 9, so at least I'm guaranteed of, yeah. My guess is people miss the ferry from time to time. Just another thing, while I've been waiting, it absolutely bucketed down. It was a typical tropical thunderstorm, and this is supposed to be the dry season. I'm here during their winter time, for good reason. You wouldn't want to be here during summer, uh, but I was a little surprised for it to piss down the way it did. That was a heavy shower. I'm glad I sought cover. day eight in country. I got to the ticket office early after yesterday's debacle. I was there half an hour before they opened and actually opened early. You must have seen the dedication in my face. Uh, so yeah, first there, got the ticket all right. It's costing me about, I don't know, 12 bucks to get to the next island, Negros. That includes the bike. So yeah, it, uh, it didn't leave on time yesterday, 11 o'clock, but after that, I'm not expecting, uh, I'm not expecting it to leave on time today. But at least I've got the ticket, slow process, all carbon paper and ink. And, uh, haven't seen a computer on the island yet. Well, the passengers and vehicles are coming off the ferry now. Only had a light breakfast this morning, uh, pastries, a couple of sweet bread rolls, a 30 cent cup of coffee and uh, some rice wrapped in, I think it was coconut palm leaves or something. I had to go back later and ask the bloke how I was supposed to break into it because I couldn't quite figure out how to eat it elegantly. Yeah, so light breakfast. I'm not going far today. Once I get onto Negros, I've only got a ride of about 10 kilometres to my destination for this evening, which is some, I don't know, some hippie feral camp uh, on the beach, I think.
man get your home. Manually uh, lifting the bridge. Spend an extra couple of bucks and got business class. Might as well be comfortable. First impressions, looks bloody hilly and it's starting to rain again. There is no pattern to their rainfall here. But sometimes early morning, sometimes late afternoon, sometimes none at all. So yeah, it's a bit of, a bit hard for me to get my head around that. Anyway, I've only got 10 kilometres to go. If it gets heavy, I'll come over. Let's talk about the bike. It's an off-the-shelf 27 and a half inch giant mountain bike, 24 speed, nothing special. The only thing I do is is change the tyres. I stick road tyres on it and depending on which country I'm going to will depend on what, what size tyres for this place because I knew the roads were going to be a bit dodgy I've stuck wider road tyres on but if I was going somewhere like Thailand places like that where the road surfaces are pretty good I normally run skinny road tyres uh, for this trip here yeah, a little bit wider gives it a bit more cushioning. More sugar cane through here. I saw them uh, cut that by hand a couple of days ago. What I thought was an inland lake is actually a huge solar farm. Must be a joint venture because I saw some flags flying. Japanese flag, UK, the US and a couple of flags I didn't recognise. But uh, wouldn't be generating a lot of power today. It's pretty overcast. That solar farm is still going both sides of the road here. A bit of rain ahead of me. Looks heavy too. Just pull it over for a few minutes. Take the shelter on the bus stop. Give it a few minutes and see what happens. Good call. I've been joined by a local who read the same thing in mine. And another one. Quick, run, get sold shelter. <laughs> and another. I'm taking the track that I think I'm supposed to take. Very poor signage, even for these places, you know, hotels and accommodation. They don't, they don't exactly, you know, point this way, stupid. Down that way. That way. <sighs> G'day. Small, small fry. That way. Yes. Okay. There's a There is a. Can I can I get through? No. Just go under the way. 
Back to the road. Back to the road. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What I got out of all of that is above the sound of the chainsaw was no, no, I can't keep going down towards the coast along here. It's been blocked off somehow. So I've got to go back here, go to the main road, turn right, and apparently it is sign posted. So we'll give that a go, shall we? He does offer a service of picking you up from San Carlos, and I can understand why, because if, uh, if I'm having trouble finding the place, I'm sure everybody else does as well. well there's the sign I'm looking for. Small fries, one kilometre. Thank you. It doesn't take much before you're off the blacktop and into this shit again. And they're not going to attract too many international tourists until they upgrade their road, I think. Ah, uh, small fries. Yeah, I'll go there. Thank you. Now I'm getting close. Right. Well, I'm glad I pulled up when I did. I found a place. Uh, it's everything I expected it to be. I think it cost me $32 Australian. I don't know, about 25 bucks US. Um, it is right on the beach. Yeah, it's right on the beach. Uh, it's been like this for a couple of hours now. Doesn't look like it's going to let up today. This is the beach outside of uh, where I'm staying tonight. Small fries. No criticism of small fries. I think the tide's on the way out, but the dogs seem to enjoy it well enough. Yeah. I'm sure it's completely different when the tide's in and the sun is shining. I shouldn't be so critical, <laughs> at least the rain has stopped. They're, uh, they're renovating, they seem to be putting in a rooftop bar. That'll, uh, that'll draw the crowds, I'm sure. Alright, first full day on Negros. Crossed over okay yesterday, uh, took about an hour and a half. I mean, the journey was pleasant enough. Today, it's only 40 kilometres. Going from where we are to Escalante City, I've booked into an Airbnb over there. The problem today will be, like I said, it's only 40 kilometres, but the problem today, we've got a bit of, bit of climbing to do. There's a few switchbacks, and switchbacks only mean one thing, hills, uh, hills and elevation. So if you have a look at the cross section, it looks like a gain of 86 metres, which is substantial for a bloke like me, you know. <laughs> Others would scoff at it, but um, no, no, I, I, especially that one there, that's going to that's gonna hurt. Can't do much about the conditions. Uh, rain again this morning and a really heavy tropical thunderstorm last night. So the, 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 the rain is unexpected. Well, I think for this time of year, it's supposed to be their dry season. Anyway, we'll get suited up and we'll get underway. All this water, of course, is from last night's or late yesterday afternoon's thunderstorm. And looking at the forecast, it's going to be like that again today, later. Hopefully I'll be undercover by then. a small town, <coughs> pardon me, uh, just a few kilometres up the road. I'll stop there for breakfast and something to drink. I was talking to the owner of the place this morning before I left, an American, married a Filipino, lives here permanently now. I'm not going to judge the guy, we don't know his story. But uh, he asked where I was going and I told him that I was cycling pretty much around the coastline of Negros and I'll exit at, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a port city in the lower south eastern corner 
and uh, I said, is it safe there? Good day, mate. I said, is it safe there? And he said, yeah, yeah. And he asked why, and I said, well, according to the Australian government, it can be a bit dodgy. He said, no, no, it's all right, safe. I mean, I, I don't go out after night, after dark anyway, once I've had my dinner, pretty much stay indoors. A single bloke or a single person on their own, yeah, could lead to trouble, so I don't take any risks like that. Australian mate, kangaroo. Hey, hey. <laughs> you are a happy tourist. Yes, happy tourist. Happy tourist. Happy tourist. <laughs> All right, we're starting to head away from the coast now. Starting to head inland and starting to climb. So the next hour or so, yeah, might not be much fun. But I guess you gotta have those shitty times just to make you appreciate all the good ones, yeah? Well, I'm in granny gear now. And I will be for a little while, I think. Jesus. That's some uh, serious erosion there. Sometimes, when I take a deep breath, I sometimes think it could be my last. More rain. Thankfully I found another bus stop and I'm sharing it with my friends. I don't know why the roads are covered in mud. I think it's because the trucks that are used for harvesting and carrying the sugar cane, because they go off-road to load and unload, I think it must be all mud that they pick up on their wheels and uh, end up leaving on the, on the black. It is sealed under all this shit. It is sealed. And of course, after this morning's rain, it just turns to mud. I've only got a few hundred metres to my destination. I'm going to get the bike and the trailer a clean because everything's just covered in mud. And I don't want to, I don't want to wait till it gets dry, until it sets, because then it'll be harder to remove. So these car washes are all over the place. So I'll spend a few minutes and just cleaning it up. Otherwise, the hotel staff aren't going to be very receptive, I don't think. about cockfighting in, uh, in the Philippines. It's forbidden in most Southeast Asian countries, although some condone it. And I was curious about the situation here in the Philippines. I've seen a lot of dome-shaped bamboo cages, which is typical of where they separate the cocks, the roosters. And normally before a fight, they'll stick them in the sun for a couple of hours just to piss them off and get them angry. But apparently COVID was beneficial for the Philippine government because cockfighting went online and they could actually regulate it much more effectively and made a lot of money out of it. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess it's an acquired taste. Me personally, I'm still out for lunch, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know my thoughts on the sport. It's pretty barbaric. Betting man, I'd say that, that smoke you can see in the distance is probably the sugar refinery. The Lopez Sugar Association, or Lopez Sugar something, established 1927. Lopez Sugar Corporation. You get the idea. Nice shirt, buddy. It's 
looks like they're doing time. <laughs> Just happy to see a different face. It uh, wasn't supposed to rain today, but it is. I've pulled over in a, a workshop somewhere. They're pretty relaxed here, they don't mind. They understand what you're up to. It's absolutely pissing down now. Everywhere I go I leave puddles and it's not the rain, that's just sweat pouring out of my body. I consume about nine litres of fluid a day well, before I pull up. <laughs> After that there's a couple of beers. Yeah, about nine litres, nine litres of fluid while I'm in the saddle. So remaining hydrated yeah, is, is difficult. I take magnesium to prevent cramps and a bit of hydrolyte obviously to replace some of the salts. So yeah, it's tough conditions. Trying to find shelter anywhere I can now. This is what the $30 Australian gets you. Uh, this room, in fact, has been better than some of the others. <coughs> some don't have hot water, you know, toilet bowls are cracked, plumbing's all rooted, the sinks won't drain. <laughs> anyway, uh, the rain's eased a little. I'm going to try and get underway. I've got about 50 km a day today, and uh, if I do that, I'll be just short of uh, Bokalad, which is a major port city here on Negros. So, uh, I mean, I expect it will rain later on. Hopefully I'll be in a position to seek shelter when it does. west at the moment. Very shortly I'm going to change direction and start heading south and what is a crosswind currently will actually be a tailwind which would be a nice change. I guess this little piggy went to market. Public urination is 
is an accepted practice here, at least for the blokes. Be it out here in the bush or even in the towns and cities, it's not unusual to see a bloke, you know, discreetly chucking a piss in, a, in the corner somewhere. I know it's the same in Vietnam. I saw it a lot when I was there. Don't know about other Southeast Asian countries. Wouldn't want to try it in Australia. day 12 in country and things aren't, aren't going well at the moment on top of some of the other supplements that I'm taking manganese for to reduce the cramps and uh, hydrolytes to obviously replace some of the salts I, I, I'm now forced to uh, take some imodium as well which hopefully uh, fixes up some of the traveler's diarrhea I'm not crook I'm not crook in the guts but it, it, it ain't pretty when I go to the toilet it's like a, a crime scene but without the blood so you know, I started taking the Imodium, uh, and here's a tip for you young grasshoppers. When you leave country, take all that stuff with you, because stuff like Imodium, for example, you're going to need that at 1 o'clock in the morning, and you're not going to find it at 1 o'clock in the morning, so if you bring it with you, you've got it at your disposal. Now, the problem I'm facing at the moment is my, my kidneys have started acting up. I, I think because of the condition of the road, it's so rough, the, the, the road surface is so shitty, that constant vibration and, and, and getting knocked around, I, I think that's affected my kidneys, I think they're bruised for the same reason that a motocross rider wears a kidney belt. Yeah, these roads are taking their toll, so uh, I need to find a nice beach somewhere and pull up for a few days and just uh, just rest, I think. And you'd think with all this coastline that you'd be able to find a nice beach. I haven't seen one yet. Well, I'm underway for the morning. My kidneys are killing me. I've only got 14 k's to get to Bokalad. It's only going to be a very, very short ride. I'm just going to take my time. I won't be able to check into a hotel until later on this afternoon anyway, but it'll give me time to go and suss out the ferry terminal and maybe the bus station. It's day 12 for me in country. I've already got to start thinking about the logistics of, of my extraction. I can't afford to be too far away from Cebu because I've got to get my sorry ass back there to catch, catch the flight. So I need to sit down and do some sums and come up with a strategy as to how, how I'm, I'm going to get back there. Judging by the volume of traffic, I guess back a lot to the major regional city. Well, I'm at the port. I'm trying to find information on what ferries are available to what places. There's a bit of a language barrier, so I'm struggling to, uh, to get across my point. There's a large passenger terminal over there, I'll try that. I know, I've been able to establish that there's no ferries to go to Dumaguete, but there is a coach service. It leaves many times each day, it takes six hours, they'll take the bike and of course the trailer. Now that I know I can get to Dumaguete relatively easily on any given day, what that means is I can go and find a nice beach and lie on it for about three or four days, because I think that's what I need most now at the moment as therapy. That's one of the logistical problems at least sorted. So I'll catch a ferry to the next island. I don't know the name of it, I forget. From there grab another ferry to a smaller island and uh, yeah, relax for a little while. 